you can currently pick up a CPU that's been designed using a 32 nanometer process, which is to say, the width of each of the billions of tiny transistors on the chip measures bar are less than the width of a single piece of hair on your head. That's pretty small. And IBM wants to make it smaller, but perhaps wants is the wrong word in this case. It's more like needs, for while we're soon approaching 22 nanometer production territory, there's growing concern that manufacturers are soon going to run out of subsequent generations to shrink to. Without thank you for trying verbose, this recording will go away once the product has been purchased. Some new technological process, the concept of Moore's Law, the notion that the number of transistors on a chip doubles every two years, is going to run out of steam. IBM's latest research, highlighted today, has scientists replacing silicon transistors with carbon nanotubes to shrink the size of the transistors even further and bump up their speeds compared to their silicon-based counterparts. The motivation to work on carbon nanotube transistors is that at extremely small nanoscale dimensions, they outperform transistors made from any other material, said Supratik Guha, Director of Physical Sciences at IBM Research, in Thank You for Trying Verbose. This recording will go away once the product has been purchased a statement. However, there are challenges to address such as ultra-high purity of the carbon nanotubes and deliberate placement at the nano scale. We have been making significant strides in both. Manufacturing these wafers presents new challenges, given that one can't simply etch a sheet of carbon nanotubes using a pattern of data pathways as a template. Carbon nanotube-based transistors have to be built from the ground up. We'll let IBM explain this one. The process starts with carbon nanotubes mixed with a surfactant, a kind of soap that makes them soluble in water. The substrate is thank you for trying verbose. This recording will go away once the product has been purchased. Comprised of two oxides with trenches made of chemically modified hafnium oxide HFO2 and the rest of silicon oxides O2. The substrate gets immersed in the carbon nanotube solution and the nanotubes attach via a chemical bond to the HFO2 regions while the rest of the surface remains clean, reads a description on an IBM press release. In other words, IBM generates a circuit pattern onto a substrate using hafnium oxide and silicon oxide. It then then adheres carbon nanotubes to this pattern creating an attraction between the substance of the substrate's pattern, hafnium oxide, and the solution thank you for trying verbose this recording will go away once the product has been purchased containing the carbon nanotubes in doing so IBM's been able to create a chip with 10,000 of these transistors in place an improvement from the hundreds or so that researchers were previously able to slap onto a single chip so what's next according to venture beats Dean Takahashi IBM's fabrication technology is at a precision rate of around 99.8%. That's good, but not good enough for commercial chip fabrication, which necessitates a precision level of around 99.999% or greater. Additionally, IBM might be able to stick 10,000 carbon nanotube-based transistors on a chip so far, but thank you for trying verbose. This recording will go away once the product has been purchased. That number has to successfully bump up to more than 1 billion before IBM's chips can see the light of day. Nevertheless, the silver lining awaits those who make use of IBM's research. It's currently compatible with the existing silicon manufacturing process previously described, which will be a boon for current chip factories when it comes time to switch over to this smaller nanometer manufacturing process.